tale that explains The Harmony in Red by Henri Matisse from 1908 to 1909. This work and the Fauvist movement of which it's a part will be explained. We'll talk a little bit about the historical context surrounding the movement and the style itself. In the early years of the 20th century, Matisse began working with André Garand to investigate the capabilities of color. Color was their foremost tool. They used color to give form and volume rather than traditional modeling and shading. They used color, significantly arbitrary color, to express feeling, very much like the post-impressionists before them. And these investigations would eventually lead to the initialization of a new movement called Clovism. In 1905, after Duran and Matisse spent the summer on the Mediterranean coast painting, they showed some of their work at the Autumn Salon. This salon was an exhibition that was an alternative to the traditional academic salons in France, and it had a collection of artists that were included. Not only were some of these focused artists included, but we even had a Donatello work from the Renaissance. And this really was uh, a contrast that inspired the name Fauvism. A critic came to see the show, and when he wrote up his critique of the show, he said that Donatello was among the wild beasts, in French, the Fauves. Uh, the name Fauvism then uh, kind of appealed to these artists, and they adopted that name, and the movement became known as Fauvism at that point. Fauvism was a short-lived movement, only lasting a few years. But in the course of those years, Matisse, and especially Duran, uh, and also Blanc, another influential artist in Fauvism, really investigated the capabilities of color. Leaving behind a lot of detail, leaving behind a traditional three-dimensional space, these Fauvist artists use arbitrary colors, not only to give form and to give shape, uh, and to give a sense of volume, but also to express feeling. Their landscapes then came alive with color, conveying all sorts of different moods. The works of the Fauvists then were really focused on expressive capabilities, and they had a lot of different tools that they used to try and achieve it. We're looking here at a very famous book by Garin, and we can see that he used arbitrary color. And not only is the color arbitrary, but the fullness are known for using saturated, unblended, big blocks of color right out of the tube, and even using uh, some areas of the canvas that just show through and are just the primed canvas rather than being painted. All of this creates a really bright kind of aspect to the works. Fullness also try to capture a sense of spontaneity in their works. They use more spontaneous types of compositions with lots of movement. They also used really strong types of strokes. Uh, these strokes they felt like were more primitive, so it's kind of a primitivism that was prevalent in the early 20th century, an interest uh, in trying to capture something that was more intuitive, something that was less calculated, something that was uh, going to capture human expression without all the social restrictions of the day. Matisse then kind of became the unofficial leader of the Fauvist movement, and he's actually the artist who stuck with this approach the longest. A few years into the movement, Matisse created this work. He did the work for a Russian art collector, uh, Shukin, who actually ordered a harmony in blue. So Matisse does the initial work in blue and was dissatisfied with with the effect, and so he took the painting back and reworked it in the characteristic red. This work then becomes kind of the starting point for a number of compositions where Matisse experiments with red and where red dominates the color scheme. Uh, and what he wants to achieve by using the red, and of course he wants to use the red in conjunction with composition and placement, and harmony and contrast, he wants to use all of these to get to what he calls, quote, spirit of the picture, close quote. He didn't want works that were depressing, but in his own words, Matisse wanted works that were full of, quote, serenity, close quote. That could 
be for anyone. Quote, a soothing, calming influence on the mind. Something like a good armchair, which provides relaxation from physical fatigue. Close quote. So he wanted to really approach works as though they were going to be something that would envelope the viewer in something that's very comforting, something that's very calming, something they could sink into at the end of the day. And shows a number of things that we'd expect to see in a Fauvist painting. Yes, we do have that expressive component that's first and foremost, but we also have a lot of color that's used to define the face rather than traditional modeling or shading, color that's used to define the light. Uh, we see a pretty basic approach to portraying the objects and the human figure, things have been abstracted down. We see a sense of flatness, uh, and we've got lots of really broad, patching, uh, prominent kinds of brush strokes that were meant to be very primitive and to focus on that kind of intuitive, less um, calculated approach that artists were drawn to in that primitive tactic. They simplified the form here. We have a sense of flatness and decorative line that remind us of Japanese mud. And of course, Matisse was picking up on that all the way back in his post impressionist period. The colors are saturated. We can see spots on the canvas where the unprimed canvas is showing through. Uh, we don't have any really blending going on in the colors, but for the most part, it's pure or modulated type of color. We'd expect this from Fauvism too. All these ways then, Matisse and the Fauvist movement of which he's a part really moved away from what the uh, academic expectations for art would be, the traditional expectations for art would be. And instead, they're embracing an avant-garde direction. They're moving in a new, innovative uh, way that is separating them from the art that's been done in the past. And of course, the foremost goal, as we said throughout this video, is expression. A very famous quote from Matisse says, quote, what I am after, above all, is expression in the whole arrangement of my picture. In our classroom, telling the truth about well, the truth about Proposition 30. It's a big one. Is that it? I think that was it, yeah. Okay. I liked what the end was. <laughs> did, did they show a picture of the Donatello that they saw? Do, do you know what it was? Okay. Huh. No, I, I, I thought that was. A little strange that they have a Donatello in there. Yeah, and that whoever with the reviewer was said they felt Donatello was a Fauvist. Hmm. Yeah, that would be interesting to look at. I don't know which one that was. It, it was a show in Paris. Maybe I we could I could look it up somehow. Was yeah, that would be good. In the early 1900s, huh? Do you, do you want me to go back there and find it? Excuse yeah, me? yeah. If you if it's simple to do, um, what was it? Right. Context. It was right. Rather than traditional model. Here it is. In nineteen oh five, after. So it's nineteen oh five. Grand P A L A I S Palais. So that's that's the salon. Grand Palais Salon. Huh? Duran and Matisse spent the summer on the Mediterranean coast painting. They showed us some of their work at the Autumn Salon. This salon was an exhibition that was an open. This is the Autumn Salon, huh? Okay. It's spelled like A U T O M N E. Alternative to the traditional academic salon in France. And it had a collection of artists that were included. Not only were some of these focused artists included, but we even had a Donatello work from the Renaissance. And this really was a contrast that inspired the name Ovid. So I don't know if there was a 
if they were considering Donatello a phobus, it, she just said it was a contrast to it, so I don't know. Well, I thought uh, it goes on to say the reviewer felt that he was. A critic came to see the show, and when he wrote up his critique of the show, he said that Donatello was among the wild beasts. He was so, the phobe. Uh, the name phobism then. I don't know. Maybe he's just in the show, so therefore he's among the wild beasts, or maybe they considered him a wild yeah. I, I, I didn't know that. Artist, and they yeah. that name. And Probably at the <laughs> salon, poor Donatello was among the wild beasts. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's odd that they would have a Donatello there. But, yeah, I would see which one that is. Okay, I'll see what I can find. And, okay, let's see now. I'm thinking it might be his sculpture of Mary Magdalene. No, Mary, yeah, it's either Mary Magdalene or uh, John the Baptist. Those pictures huh. are oh. quite wild. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, let's see now. Let me spotlight myself. Forgot to do that. And let's see what else here. Make sure our videos are off. And let's make sure we're moving. There we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> I just wanted to introduce you to my new friend here. This uh, pen. I, I don't think I'll use it today, but. Let me, let me get a piece of paper here. So it's just a brush pen, but it's made by Pentel, and it's called the um, like F U D A. I don't know what that means, but so but. Mitzko uh, would be able to tell us. Are you, you you can you can um, oh yeah, you know what that means, Mit Mitzko? F U D A. Uh, well, well, if it's brush, F U D E. Oh, okay, maybe it's, okay. Yeah. That's probably what it was. It just means brush. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm just I'm setting it down on the side and dry brushing. And then I, I, if you squeeze a little bit, you know, you can get a nice, a nice line. But it's really very, very much like a sumi brush. And you could, you can, um, you know, squeeze a little harder and get a dark line. Or you can use a light touch and just drag it along there. And so it's... It's basically, you know, the most of the properties of a brush, but it's it's just ink. But uh, can you refill it? Yeah, no, I saw a video that you can, but it's not made to be refilled, but I saw a video on how to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, can you unscrew the body from it? Does it have... Yeah, you, you can unscrew the body from it, but it's... it's um, Does it have um, cartridges? There's a pocket version of that Pentel. I think it's called the Pentel Pocket Brush. It's yeah. a lot. It's about maybe half the length, and yeah. that one can take cartridges that okay. are um, that are waterproof. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The, the kind of ink you put in there is up to you. Though. Yeah. Yeah. But I saw this hack on there where the guy just he takes he takes this off. And he just slips a little razor blade in there and pops this off, and then you can fill it up. So cool. So I'll probably end up doing that, but because I like all that stuff. Okay. So let's uh, get my picture out here. And I'll do this about this big. Yeah, basically a basically a square. Need a little a little more horizontal than a square. And let me zoom in on it. This is this is a little too light. Maybe I'll just use a pen. Oh, 
Okay, so, you know, if you kind of go halfway here, and you can see the window frames in. I can say it's going to be hard using this. Sometimes they have these felt tips, you got to get them started every time you work. It, it gets really repetitious after a while. I'll just use this one. These uniballs are pretty good. I don't think it's water soluble though. I mean, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's water soluble. Okay, so you know, we got this and this. Okay. Let's come down here and her phone. Yeah, the table comes, you know, it's actually lower than halfway. So this, this should have been down a little further. Yeah. Oh. Come in like that. We have a chair over here. And I think for this, I'm not going to bother really getting it all perfect. Just want to kind of know where things are. Uh, her head is about this high on there. So I'm just going to kind of guess about the size. In her. Now I can get in there and, you know, and this, remember this is just a a value study, so don't get too nuts about it. Maybe I'm already getting too nuts about it. There. All right. We have these. So I think Matisse was taking from, for you know, for expression, taking from more more primitive type painting, and, and pushing that into the culture and into his uh, into his painting to try to create a more expressive way to see a painting. Notice there's really very little shadow in this whole thing. A little bit under her chin. I think that's almost it. So it, it really relies on on flat shapes to pull it off. There's something I don't understand about the design. I, want, I was drawing it last night, and it's like the lines and the curves are just perfect. They echo each other and all of that. And then there's that painting on the left upper corner that just completely... It's out there, that's looking out the window. Oh, it's a window? Yeah, I think so. Oh, well, yeah. that's better, but it's, it's very distracting and it disrupts everything, even though the curves are in the branches of the tree. And the color scheme is totally different. What the heck is that doing there? Oh, I was thinking it was a Matisse painting, but it's a window, huh? Uh, that's, well, it looks like a window sill, yeah. That is so interesting. I I look at it it's so interesting. I don't know who was speaking, um, but with thank you for that that thought. I sort of thought it was a wonderful um, outlet, you know, a relief from all of that red. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of red. Yeah, I can't keep my eyes on the red. They just keep going to that window thing, and it it keeps up so much of the painting. <laughs> This is a note to everyone. If you click your participants, you can tell who's talking. That was Christine because their mic is on and vibrating. Oh, thank you. And that's the way I've learned some names. So it's like we're closer. Also, I looked up Donatello at the show and all I could find is that he had two busts there. Two marble busts, but I don't oh. know of what. 
So maybe someone else that's a better detective could find out. What were they, sculptures? Probably, yeah. Marble busts. Yeah. So they had sculptures. Maybe that's where Michelangelo gets his, uh, because Michelangelo is quite, quite the wild beast. What a, and that's just too, too much talent in one person. Okay, so, so anyway. How poor are you drawing with? This is a, just a uniball, it's water soluble, kind of piston driven, and it's got a little bit of a, so the nice thing about that is that it, you, um, it's I really, book. when I'm drawing with these felt tip Sharpies and whatever, I have to, every time I, every, I'll, I'll, I'll go like this, and then when I want to start another line, I got to kind of get, <laughs> get it started and do another one. And that really gets, uh, you know, after you've done that 25 times, you're just kind of going, man, I wish I could just have one and just work, please. Yeah. So is it a rollerball tip or a brush tip? Um, um, I think it does, it does kind of roll, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a hard, not a belt tip. It's a hard tip, yeah. Yeah, it's a hard oh, tip. Oh, I see, metal tip, yeah. Yeah, it does, I think it does have a ball on the end, yeah. Really, I mean, I have it going this way and it still comes out, so. We like that. Okay. And what's, what yes. was the kind that you didn't like? Oh, I mean, just just a lot of these felt tip ends. Felt tip, yeah. When they're when they're just, you know, even these good ones. Yeah. Uh, when I'll get drawing with them, and then I'll stop, and I'll come over here, and I'll go draw over here, and then I have to get it started again to get going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now sometimes when you when you get a brand new one. Um, it's fine, but when they're like halfway to three quarters of the way through, they start just stopping and stopping and getting out. Yeah. So it's Hard nice to have that little piston in there. Hard starts. Okay, now let's... <clears throat> so, as you can see how bright that white is, so the red is pretty dark. I would say the red's about a five, four to five value. So if, if black is a 10 value and white is a zero. The red is, yeah, it's about halfway in between. You can see if you just look at the black and the white, the value of the red is about halfway in between. So let's just take the Prussian blue and CAD red. And uh, um, probably a little darker than that. Kind of, there's a chair back here. Whoops. I mean, I mean whatever. It's okay if you don't have a red little thing in there. Just trying to do a, a real basic value study here. I think with the black, I can just paint right over it. This blue is a little on the light side, so I'll be going to dodge it. Now, the reason I gave you two pictures is because there's a, a lady walking in front of the other one, sort of with life. I, I think that's probably the truest color, probably more true than the other one. I, I might be wrong on that, but it, if you look, notice much more vibrant blues in that. So, so just to let you know, I mean, you don't have to use it for the value study, but just to let you know, I think it's... truer color so I might go by that. I'm noticing the green down here. 
is about the same value as a sky. Oh, I went right over the white thing here. Oh well. It's okay. So some of these in the chair are a little bit darker reds than these back here. Good to know. And and we got these little pieces of fruit. Just going and I'm going right over the blues and right over the reds with this because they're darker. I mean, yep, this is the red, so I'm just going right over the at least the value of the red. There's this blue thing, it's a little bit lighter blue, so I'm going to kind of dodge that. Oh, that was something a little bit lighter. You know, you don't have to get every little thing in this, okay? Because we'll be here all day if you do that. We're just trying to get some good basic values. Now, <clears throat> go for some of the lighter ones, like the windowsill here. house, even the chair, a little bit lighter, not as light as the fruit, and these blues are a little bit lighter, back here, and these are very bright, these little flowers and roses. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned the two photos because I thought those viney things were black because on the first photo they yeah. were black. Yeah. This blue was I, I was noticing the green was really dark and I thought, well, that, that doesn't look right. Yeah. Um, it could be, I'm, you know, I'm looking at the lady too. I'm thinking, well, her colors look pretty true on her. I mean, you're never going to get perfect color, but this is probably the best that I saw. Okay, now I'm going to go really dark. I'm going to get some really, really dark, dark. You know, the same two colors, but just less water. So I can get really dark in here. Looks like you need to go a little bit lighter with that background. Okay. That red. And I just think that um, a lot of line work, a lot of line work with a, you know, it's either black that he's using for the line or he's using a really dark blue. I can't tell. So that this Prussian blue might be fine. Some of this. If you have indigo, that might work. Yeah, uh, that would be fine. Yeah. Okay. This white here is a little bit bright. So in other words, if you compare it, this white on the trees to the some of the fruit of her face, you can see they need to be knocked back a little bit. Maybe not that much. Darker than the face. Okay. Some of this 
when the chair is a little bit darker. And <clears throat> let's try it again. Okay, so I have, and this time I think I'll just, sometimes it helps just to have a nice solid line around the outside. There we go. So if this is halfway, yeah, the window seal it does come to about halfway. And this way, well, it's only about you know, maybe a third of the way here. Oh, so there we got. That's fine. Just looking to get some colors in here. So if they're the drawing's not 100% accurate, you don't want to sweat that. At this point, you just want just general basic shapes. Bush. Mom, can you move the picture over slightly? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, gosh. I'm looking right at it. Thank you. Yeah. Just keeping the uh, drawing really. Really basic. So here's the bottom, then, well, oh. like that. Hmm. Why is it so? Oh, I'll have to figure that out later. Okay. And the table comes up about this high. She's about here. She comes up around around this high. Hi. How large is do you suggest doing this? Like just to your preference or what is the most um, you know logical way to go about how maybe like nine by 12 or 11 by that big okay yeah yeah i wouldn't go too small it's got a lot of detail yeah yeah okay cool thanks yeah i, I wouldn't go I'm, I'm gonna go a little larger than normal i'm gonna go on my multimedia paper okay thanks. which is um nine by 12. we got this And we got this chair behind her. Okay. good um maybe right away just i just 
cat red. Let's see if this is the right red. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Just cat red. And you know, again, try not to overdo it. Because there's so much detail in this piece, it's really get, easy to get lost in all of it. So, and this is like, it's the same red on the table pretty much. There's a little touch of a difference, but I think I'll go right over this chair. It's got red in it. I'm going to leave a little bit of blue for this. All right. Good enough. With all that red. And then I want all that green back there. It's a pretty blue green. If you have an emerald green or something, I might use that. But I'm going to use ultra Prussian blue and lemon yellow. And you'll see it. Yeah, that's a, a bit dark. Little mama in all of that. It looks like a cobalt or a um, ultramarine blue in the sky. And this pink right here. I mean, it looks a lot like the um, the cad. I'd use the cad red, little cad yellow, and then really thin it down. So it's a little bit lighter. You got a little bit of that green in there, unfortunately. Okay, and what else? The brown of the chair, so mixed red, yellow, and blue. Cad red, cad yellow, ultramarine blue. And you could look at it, the red is dominating the brown on that. So it's it's definitely a red brown on here. So just gonna think, think in terms of a more red brown. Maybe not as dark as I painted it there. Maybe something more in that category. I know. Yeah, there's a little bit more on this chair too. It's a little even brighter. So I'm going to add more red to that same color and then a little bit of cad yellow, a little more cad yellow to this color in this chair right here. And um, it looks to me like her shirt is just really dark. It looks to me like ultramarine blue. That's what I'm seeing. So if we just put it on really thick, heavy. You know, and the dark parts of it, you know, you maybe you need maybe you need a little pressure. Yeah, I think it's maybe it's both. Is this very blue on here? <clears throat> um, how about 
we go over all of the blues with the ultramarine. Again, cobalt would be very nice too. And I'm just going to Just so I know that it's an ultramarine, you, you know, you don't have to again get everything, a little thing right, or we're going to be here all day, you won't get any work done, you're finished. So, okay. Let that dry up again, we'll hit some dark lines around it. Actually, with the light vases up in here too, it's just the same color, watered down, like this, like this one right here. Just water those down. And then here we have a very light blue for this, all this. Um, again, sort of a emerald green. I'm going to use Prussian blue and lemon yellow for the greens in here. And then we have some very pale yellows and reds for the fruit, very pale. So for that really pasty, I, I might use the, uh, the lemon yellow. And let's see what you guys are seeing. Here. For some of these yellows, just very, he's using a lot of this real pasty yellow. And then on, on the chair, much, much more vibrant. So you get getting into the cad yellow. Yeah, more than that. Some of these other fruit are pretty dark too, like these little two little guys over here. And for the trees, I mean, just an, uh, a cool off white. So I just took, I had some, um, a bunch of different blues, but I think just, just, uh, because it's a gray blue, so I would use the red, yellow, and blue, a little bit of that, and then really add a lot of blue to it. And then... A lot of water. Of course, we have some really red apples in here or something. She's got sort of a yellow Maybe yellow ochre hair. It's pretty similar to the color of the chair. Pretty similar and same some of this fruit. So I'm going to make a yellow ochre. This is why I don't buy yellow ochre because I just take cad red, cad yellow. Give myself an orange. Add some blue to it. Ultramarine blue. I really took it over. Okay, and then dominate it with the yellow. Yeah. Really dominate it with the yellow. Her hair and some of these fruit. Okay, yeah. And the windowsill is that pasty yellow again, so. Let's see, I'm gonna water down this, this color I use right here and see how that works. Oh yeah. Yeah. A little lighter down here. Okay. All right. Rob. Yeah. You you really think that's a window? It's almost like a picture window from the 50s. Do they have that in France in the early 1900s, a window that you get the Trump Loy painting, <laughs> the full of the eye. I don't yeah. know. 
I, I, I interpret that as a, uh, you're, you're in this kitchen, or in this, this uh, dining room, and there's a big window. Oh. Okay. It's a lot of glass. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just a big painting, yeah. I think it's just an, a, an opening in the wall. Maybe they're on the terrace and there is an oh. opening um, in the wall that doesn't have any, you know, glazing or frame or it's sash or anything. Yeah. yeah. You have quite an imagination, Phoebe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, know, I do know that, you know, French windows, let's say, open in and the shutters open out and it, it would be, be too much stuff to include in this picture remember he's yeah he's pressing okay so it's rather than a window it's a big opening of like a door no yeah. or, or well a huge window okay. oh i just read um um Henry's little piston brush. You know what? I have it right here. This, this is Henry's piston brush. I didn't know you had that on there, Henry. Um, it does, it's very similar. It's almost the same. The cool thing about it though, it's got that piston in it. So can you see it? I can move it up and back like that. So you can push, cool. push put a little more pressure and it gets more ink to the front. And you can just, you know. Oh, I need to put more ink in this. There, it's starting to come out, but I, I don't think I have enough ink in this. There we go. But it, it's very much the same, yeah. The nice thing about it is uh, that, like, when you're talking about that small pocket brush, that, that's great. And then you can just fill this up, right? Let's see. Oh, here's the cool thing is, oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, look, you go like that and then you put it in your ink and you, it sucks it up right to the front. That's, that's great. You know, let me do this. Let me see. I can get a little bit of. That's really cool. You don't have yeah. to screw anything. You just it's better start sucking up by. Yeah. You know, I, I, I learned about this pen because I was looking at this artist online who was real famous for drawing with him. And I, I like Henry's piston brush because you could fill it with different colored ink. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's pretty cool. I didn't even like, sorry about that, Henry. I was like, here. Yeah. Look at that. That's great. I just add a little bit of water to it. I, I sucked up a little bit of water to it because there's, I, I don't want to put more ink in it right now. It's going to take too much time. But yeah, very, very similar, very similar strokes. Um, yeah. One stroke and boom, you got it. You got it. <laughs> Give him a little smile. There you go. <laughs> Have a nice day. Okay, it's a great. Yeah, this is fantastic. Thanks, Rob, for the demo. Yeah, you know, I, I, I saw your thing in the chat. I'm like, oh, I got it right here. I was just playing with this. <laughs> but you know, um, I have to say, I was getting qualities out of it, uh, a little more positive line qualities out of it uh, than it was with the other one. It you because you can push the ink to the brush a little bit easier with the with this. Uh, I noticed with this one, I had to kind of go like this and then go like this and, and really squeeze hard, and then I got it up there. But I found it was so. They both have their advantages. Okay. So, everybody got this? Shall we? 
I just read in an article that uh, the thing is a window. Oh, it is a window. Oh, hey, great. Can you leave it there for just a second so I can take it? I win. Yeah, I'll yeah. leave there for Yeah, just abstracted. Just, just tell me when you're done. I'm done. Okay. So, you know, I think that I'll just use, uh, I think this pen would be better than this because I, I don't need the line quality right now. I'm just looking for. Uh, that's pretty large too. I think when I do mine. Huh. I think. Okay. You can know I'm thinking there. Whoops. Okay, so again, I'm going to just start my, I'm going to draw with this so you can see it a little bit easier. Um, so if this is about halfway, then I'm just going to come down about here. And the inside of the window seal is approximately halfway, then you come down a little bit further. Yeah, it's okay if you're not perfect. With these little trees here. guys there. Um, we've got this chair and the chair comes, let's, I'm just going to say it comes about this far away from the, um, the side here and it comes out to about there and then we have a There's a lot to this chair. <laughs> I'll just have last one right there. Good enough. Now, quick 
quicker looking in here. This bottom part. We've got well, let's just get her in there. You know, her head comes up about let's say about this high. And again, it's not a hundred percent necessarily get everything exactly in proportion and all that. I mean the thing that the thing if you walk away from this piece understanding that it's a very untraditional type painting for the time especially for that time this must have been just earth shattering really you must have thought these people were out to destroy western civilization or something you know um When really they're, they're just honestly trying to make a search. They're, they're searching for a new way of of seeing. All kinds of new things were going on. Remember the Industrial Revolution. You've got all kinds of uh, inventions just happening all over the place. So. really was a time for uh, innovation. And I think what they were trying to do is think they were saying, you know, to, to innovate, maybe we need to deconstruct art, go back to our roots, see what we're all about as, as humans, and see what we come up with. I mean, it must have been a, a great adventure. You know, I mean, artists, People in general are, are adventurers, but artists are extremely adventurous. <laughs> and we were looking, you know, for life to be an experience. As they say, you know, you want to suck the life out of life, you know, while you're here. And I think Matisse really, well, what a, what a life. Wow. The things he must have done and seen. By the end of his life, when he was painting in the chapel in south of france yeah his arthritis or i think it was his arthritis was so bad he would have um his the nurses uh tape a brush on the end of a stick to his arm right and he did really beautiful beautiful things that way i remember in school we used to do that just in and just to study matisse we would draw with a big and then what's funny was I, when I started doing murals, I was noticing that was a really good way to draw really big with, with chalk on the end of a broomstick. Huge. But anyway, yeah, served me well, actually. But I know, how about that, huh? What a, what a devoted artist. And that, that's what he's, that's his legacy, too being just known as this really, really devoted. And maybe, I don't know. Other artists like Picasso. Um, who is really kind of a Michelangelo in, in his own way of modern painting. Um, but really didn't leave her the, the nicest little legacy, did he? <laughs> but 
same time. What are you? I wasn't there. It's very liberating just to draw like this and, and think like this. You know, with all my academic training, you know, I feel like, wow, what, what, it, what it must have been like for some of those really academic painters to meet Matisse and then to be, to, to have him paint with him and must have, wow, I can't imagine. In today's world, we really don't know what that's like. picturing him doodling in elementary school or whatever the yeah. equipment was just doodling all over the place which is what is all over this painting yeah yeah i hear you that's what i'm i definitely it's uh it's got the adventure of adventure some quality of a child with with also a lot of the the taste of this very sophisticated aesthetic is what they used to call them. Oh, I think they still do. I never hear anybody called that anymore, but all right. I'll just end that thing. This one there. And this. These artists would just do research all over the world, trying to find all these different arts, and they were open to it. And I, you can see Western art for a long time was just not open to, you know, art from, let's say, India or, or China or, or wherever. You know, I mean, when when we start getting influenced by that, you start seeing, wow, everything changes. And even today, the, 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 the styles are, most styles are highly influenced by people like Matisse. I'm just going to kind of base it in like that. There we go. And another one over here. Got a lot of these. Designs everywhere. It's almost like a textile everywhere.
Yeah, I think I'm going to start this off with the cataract. Just to get this thing going here. Let's see if I have an option. Go with this. Okay. Oh, yeah. There we go. Just a watered down cat red. You put too much water on it. It'll dry very light and unsaturated. So I'd suggest putting it on there like medium heavy, medium to heavy. So it flows, but you want it to cover. Working more of like gouache, you can just paint the whole thing red right, and then come back over with the blue. It'll cover like that, but I'm not even sure that this is slower. One thing Matisse does is it really makes a big deal out of the, the flat space. Such a graphic. When we talk about graphic arts, usually we're talking about the the use of this flat space. That's why, you know, to be a graphic artist, you would behoove you to study Matisse. Cheats too. If you look at the um, cheats. the fine kind of thing that's right next to the edge of the window or painting or whatever it is, it comes down and when it gets to those fluffy flowers in the vase, it just disappears. He doesn't try to paint it behind the flowers or anything. 
This is oh. when he picks it up later. Yeah, they're, they're really after another kind of, of uh, idea. And, and, and it really threw, you know, to be an academic painter in this period and, and then to have someone like Matisse come along and you know, get all these commissions when you're not getting the commission. You're not going to go, hey, wait a second. In other words, you know, you know that old saying, um, just when I thought that I knew all the answers, it changed all the questions. <laughs> it must have been like that for them. Because it wasn't, it just, not about academic painting anymore, sorry. We switched, and we switched like overnight. So it must have really. Throwing a lot of them. I don't know, I can just paint right over this chair. Because what's going in front of it is something darker and and in the red family, so that's easy. Yeah. It was got a lot to it. Oh, I never put this blue, this sort of blue design down here. Fake it here. All that red is really nice to look at. I guess I could have gone right over this chair.
And if I were really smart, I would have taken Henry's piston pan here and filled it up full of red. I'd have done this whole thing in a second. <laughs> Wouldn't have to keep reloading. I think this painting, I, I don't know what the size, well, you, you see what, see how big the lady is in, in comparison to it. So it, the thing must be oh, six by eight, no, six by, <clears throat> like six by seven feet or something, almost six by six. Maybe it's seven by seven, wow. Big painting. Can you imagine looking at all that red for that long? I kind of bug your eyes out. Whew, it's a lot of red. Well, that's drying up. I'm going to go over to the big complementary color over here. Sort of a blue green. And I'm going to use the Prussian blue. And um, lemon yellow. Something like this. I might be a little on the blue side. Let's see. Can I have a little bit more of that lemon yellow to it? Now, where are we? And I went right over my little dots. I'll, I'll add some more little dots up here. I'm going to go right over the bush. It's it's too similar of a color to avoid that.
And now I see a very similar green in, uh, you know, around in here and this plate. Yeah, so in the two plates surrounding. A delicious meal. We've got that yellow. It's sort of, um, what do you call it? You know, I, I used red, yellow, and blue, and then added a lot of yellow to it and really thinned it out. And let's, let's give it a test here first. Yeah. The reason I test it here is because I'm going to go over this with something more deeper, more more deep. So <clears throat> so, so in other words, I can cover over that really easy. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. And these little guys. Eesh. Should get down a little bit better. They're pretty bright. Look at all this red back there. And be easy to leave something out of this painting. the glass in a bluish. I'm just going to take a very faint ultramarine blue. I'll just paint all the glass things. Hmm. 
I'm going to go back to that chair now. Get that deeper yellow. Again, it's just, it's cad red, a cad red, cad yellow, ultramarine blue, but mostly like 90 something percent cad yellow. And then I see a, a really similar color in some of the fruit and her hair. So whoops. Got a little bit of pink on her face, but it's her face is almost white. A little, so red, yellow, and blue for the flesh tones. We can fix them all again. It's just cat red, cat yellow, ultramarine blue. And then I dominate with the red and put it on very light. And for some reason he puts blue on her neck to be a shadow. I think that's the only shadow. I see a couple of shadows underneath things, but very, very little shadow on this piece. <laughs> it's funny. So easy to do. I keep thinking of moose antlers. <laughs> This time of year, sorry. I, I went there once in winter. Oh boy. That was the coldest I've ever been in my whole life. Where was this? Uh, Edmonton, Canada. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I, I spent a I spent a winter there one day. One day. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, it was. Was it below zero? It was 14 below zero. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my little Southern California. Dude, you didn't, know. didn't understand that. I used to live in New Hampshire, inland. And yeah. It was up to 35 below. And you had to block heater on your car or it wouldn't start. And... Wow. Sometimes you had to leave your faucet on at night so that the water would keep dripping and just oh, yeah. freeze. Yeah. Oh my God. How but long did you live Did you there? like it there? I loved it there. Yeah. It's See, quiet. so many people love it back there. So you you get you get past the winters, right? I mean, you you you. Uh... Not really. <laughs> well, the hard thing about the winter. The hard yeah. thing about the winters is you never see anybody because everybody's inside. Oh, right, right. You have to worry about that. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of people left. It was um, it was 
was a college I was teaching at Dartmouth and, and they had trouble mm. retaining people. Yeah. Well, what did you teach? Physics. Physics. Oh my God. That's my yeah. thing. Yeah. Physics. Well, now, you... now watercolor is my thing. I got a question for you. Yeah. Um, I don't is, know is, is, is time, is time a, 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 a man invented thing or does it actually exist beyond people? Oh, it, it's like space. It's both. You know, there's something there oh. and you have to name it and describe it. So it, okay. I mean, it goes on when the people disappear, the, the time keeps, keeps ticking, but, um, hmm. but you want to have something to call it and some way to describe what it does. And so you give it a name and then you start writing equations, which is okay. really weird. You know, the whole of, the whole of life, the whole of the universe is described by equations. And the weird thing is that we can understand the equations, like how do we evolve for that, right? Yeah. That is weird. Yeah. Very interesting. I, in fact, it's so weird, I don't have any idea what you just said. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't help us to reproduce to know these equations, so how did we evolve? Now I know you're a good physicist. <laughs> <laughs> see, see how I quizzed you right away? Yeah. Now I, now I know you're a good physicist because I because I, I don't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> no, I um, I understand you perfectly. Yeah, people <laughs> used to ask me questions on planes and then they look at me and they'd say, I understood that. <laughs> like like they weren't supposed to. I had a physicist take my perspective class once and and he said, how are you at math? And I said, uh, not very good. I mean, uh, and he said, that's horrible because you're doing pure math here. This is, this is, this is, uh, he goes, but you're, you know, you're, you're doing some really, uh, you know, math, kind of high math going on here, you know? And I said, oh, well, he said, you know, you, I think you just weren't introduced to math, right? He was like, it's a problem with our schools. You know, I never ever use math and perspective. If you really? just if you just look at what's there and paint what you see, you get yeah. perspective, right? And then you don't have to do the math. Well, you can do that. Yes, you can do that. You just have to yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do you it can. with the math, but why not just look at it and do it? Now you're sounding like a common sense person. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting you to give me Thank something. You. Well, it all started back in the... Okay. All right, so I'm going to come back here with the ultramarine blue now. Just straight ultramarine blue in these and just very light. Very lightly come over these and probably lighter than this. Uh -huh. Let's see what you're seeing. Yeah, yeah, about like that. It's watercolor. Yeah, you know, I, I uh, I spent like two months in San Francisco back in the early 90s. And really, because uh, my brother-in-law's, he was over there and I was moving him back here. And then he kept, <laughs> it was supposed to be like three weeks I was supposed to be out there and it turned out to be a little longer, but I didn't care because I loved it. And um, uh, his roommate was a physicist. And we just really, like, really hit it off. And he also played guitar, which I really liked. And he was an amazing guitar player. So I play guitar too, so we... Most physicists are, do music. Isn't that interesting? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Genetically, that sense. genetically, the things that supposedly travel together on genes are mathematical ability, left-handedness, schizophrenia, 
Oh, schizophrenia. Um, and music. And, you know, yeah, yeah, I have a schizophrenic brother. My, my husband's a physicist, and he once sat down at a table with 10 physicists, and he said, I want to sit here because I'm left-handed. And nine of them said, me too. Wow. What if you're ambidextrous, though? Yeah, he does certain what is that? things with his right hand. He does overhanded things with his right oh, okay. hand. With his left hand and underhanded sports with his right hand. And yeah. And I've been shooting a bow and arrow since I was a kid. I don't shoot that much anymore, but you know, I just for target and and because my dad's really 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 excellent and um so we all did it and so i went down here to the pasadena archers with my daughter because they anyway we used to shoot together it was this father daughter sunday thing that we used to do and um so i had to Kind of learning how to uh, shoot again, and he goes. So let's figure out which. Before you shoot, uh, let's let's figure out which which eye you're dominant in. And I go. Well, I've been shooting for a long time, so I, I already know I, I gotta shoot like this. And he goes, Okay. Well, why don't you just try it anyway? It's a quick little test we do on you. And he goes, But you're actually a left eye dominant. And I said, well, uh, Really? Because really? Because I've been looking through my right eye my whole every time I. Since I was a kid, doing this, he goes, "You should try doing it with your left." I'm gonna. You want me to shoot this thing left-handed? I have never done that. I've been shooting for years, so I did it. And inside of like maybe an hour, I was shooting better than I did the other one. I'm like, wow! So this whole time I've been doing it backwards. <laughs> you know what did he do to figure that out? Oh, you know, you, you focus on one area and then you 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 uh you point to it. I think you use both fingers. Yeah, you use both hands and you point to it, and then you you look at it through one eye, and then you look at it through the other eye. And you'll notice one eye looks right down it, and the other eye will look sort of off to the side. You could do it right now. Just point to the camera and do that, or point somewhere, and just you'll notice. One eye looks right down it, and the other eye looks sort of, it's a little bit off. Huh. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a quick, quick, easy test. I wonder if I would have, I mean, <laughs> when I used to play baseball, I probably, because uh, I remember they just made me right-handed, you know. I probably should have tried uh, switch hitting. All right, I'm just going with Prussian blue here. And maybe, maybe I'll push in a little bit of the, uh, a little bit of um, ultramarine in that and into her voice as well. It's a little bit darker back here, though, and toward the middle, it's a little bit lighter. I'll use the ultramarine in there. I should paint with my left hand. That's one thing. I don't know if you guys know this. But I'm sure you probably have your palette on the side of your of your painting that you that where your where your your uh, dominant hand is. Otherwise, you're reaching you're reaching over here and doing it all the time. You get all these stripes across your painting. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> I watch students do it too, and I'm like, uh. Not to make you feel dumb, because I've done it many, many times myself, but if you put your palette over here, you'll have a lot easier time. They go, oh, oh. <laughs> I 
you always put your pellet in a place where it's it's closest and easiest for you. It'll it'll save you lots of time and energy later. And farthest away from your coffee cup. Oh boy, that's funny. And put your water close. Because when you come out of the water, sometimes you drip on everything. Like that? <laughs> Drippage. All right, so I'm going with just a darker brown here. Oh, I should have gone down there. Huh? Looks like, like that. Like that. So again, it's just red, yellow, and blue. I added a little bit more red and blue to this. And I'm using a little bit heavier. Right here too. Van Gogh's chair here, huh? There's a red fruit. Pretty red roses up in there too. It's kind of hard to see them. So you got a red background. Just make mine a little bit different. Touch darker. You know, some of these little, little flowers are yellow too. The little ones.
perfect. I'm using Henry's pen right here. Oh, these. I was going to use blue, but I think they're black. Brushed. No, I'm putting on the red after the blue, and it when I hit the edge of the blue, I get a very dark color. So maybe he just ran over the edge of the blue with his red and got those dark marks at the edge of the blue. Yeah, that could be. He, he's working in a different technique. He's working in oil, so. Well, that's tricky. Yes, he's definitely going opaque. So we just have to do it in our own way. The, the real point of the piece is just that, just to experience this. Does it use his flash shapes? Torture us? Yeah. <laughs> I knew somebody was going to copy this someday, and I want to really take it to him. It is quite an intricate piece. Once you get into it. Very, very light blue shadow under her chin, under her jaw. It's interesting that he chose to put a shadow there. It really doesn't have much shadow anywhere else. Thank you. 
Hmm. All right. What was this called? The red room? The red uh, interior? No. Harmony, Harmony in red. Harmony, Harmony in red. red. Such a great name for it, too. Harmony in red. Matisse. He did say 1908 or something like that. Yeah, 1908 to 1909. I mean, if, if he was doing this, you know, 110 years ago, why should we feel? <laughs> We could really be pushing some boundaries. It's almost like a primitive style art. Yeah. That's that's where they get, you know, just like Modigliani, which <clears throat> Modigliani, we, we studied that last night in my uh, figure class. And they all, you know, they all hung out in the same circles. But yeah, I'm really, really into uh, Primitive cultures. I think probably because you know that that's. <clears throat> I don't know. They're doing art. I don't know. Who knows how long they've been working in that style of doing art. I was just watching a, a thing with these hunter gatherers today. There's still hunter gatherer tribes out there. They're not very many, but. I was. I was. This guy went out with them and they have some amazing customs and they're just wonderful people. And they're, they're amazing people, man. They go out hunting in a day and they come back with all this stuff, honey. They're the people that talk with the clicks. I don't think it was a sand Bushman though. It was some, I forgot the name of the tribe, but they, they definitely, there's a South African tribe that speaks in the clip. I yeah, that's that's the Sun Bushman. Yeah, I that's think the it's Kalahari Desert. But X this is another another one. I think it's like X H O S A for that tribe. Yeah, really. And that 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 now that Sun Bushman is supposed to have the oldest genes. The, the DNA, the oldest DNA we know of. So we everybody can trace all their genetic markers back to that tribe. And when you have you ever looked at them, they look, they look really. You'd think they'd be really dark, and they're really fair. They're really really light. They look uh, like all of us. It's weird. <laughs> And they're these really humble people, really, really, and they, and they always, you, you know, you get the, the scientists talking to them and asking them questions, and they, and they look at them all like kind of, um, like, you'll get there someday, you will, just keep trying. <laughs> so wise. The oldest remains they found in Sweden are from 
Negroid people, you know? Wow. We really did come out of Africa and we got all the way to Sweden. Sweden, so wow. Then, you know, so. do, do they know how old it was? Well, they do, but I don't remember. Well, okay then, folks, it's 1132. Um, how about we take some pictures and get them into me? Let's see, what, do I have any yet? I just got notified that I voted. <laughs> okay, great. Um, yeah, so how about 10 minutes on that, okay? So we've got 11.33, 11.43 is what I have. So just, just 10 minutes. <laughs> how about tomorrow? <laughs> I know, really. <laughs>
Oh, we have one. I'll give you a few more minutes. starting up again in Arcadia. Sun just came out in Pasadena and nearly blinded me. Yeah. Oops, it's gone again. <laughs> it was a great break though. I got to backwash my pool because it was it just the level was so high. So Okay, so far we have one person. It's 13 minutes or 12 minutes, something like that.
Well, we have three. I'll get started. Hopefully you guys will get yours in before I, because sometimes I'll, if I start <clears throat> with just a few people, then we spend all day waiting. Okay, let's see. Oh, wait, oops. I have to hit my... There we go. All right, we're getting there now. Cindy, wow. That's a good looking copy, Cindy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. How many did you do? This is the third. <laughs> the third one, wow. There are two, but they're on different paper. I used hot press because it's faster to cover a lot of ground. It's yeah, I slap on the red. I went with the multimedia paper because it's just, it's it's almost like a hot press paper, a little bit easier to um, move on. Mm -hmm. The rough paper, I spent a lot of time getting the white out. Right, yeah, you, yeah. This is, this is great, I mean, it looks like you had a lot of fun doing it. Well, at the end, I just grabbed some ink and outlined everything and that made it more fun. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed coming back and outlining things did, did quite a bit for it. Yeah. I want to tell George X H O S A is called COSA is the easiest to say it. Oh, okay. Okay. X H O S A COSA. The, the South African tribe. Well, it's the language. I actually think maybe the Homba speak it. I'm not sure. Hmm. But there are 11 languages in South Africa and it's taught in schools. So most everyone speaks COSA now. Oh, wow. Our, Thank you. Our niece married a man from Cape Town. They oh. they all speak this language. Uh-huh. Is that with the clicks? With the click. That's great. I want to know. <laughs> oh, well, actually, I have a DVD of the opera Carmen sung in Kosa and filmed in one of the townships in Kalishita, if you'd like to listen to it. Very <laughs> interesting. I was listening to it. Uh, I was watching this this video, uh, and and they had ton of they had people probably fifty feet away, and you can hear those clicks. They're really pronounced. So mm -hmm. it's just like, click, 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 click. <laughs> it's a great language. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Is that in order to keep the language alive that they sure. teach you? Yeah. Well, I think I think there's a number of the tribes people still living. <clears throat> mm hmm. No, I think there are they, there are eleven languages. I think they're trying to keep them all alive, all the yeah. languages. Yeah. Maureen speaks Zulu also. Oh wow. Oh, well, if that, you live oh. there, you just have to communicate. You can't demand that everybody speak English. Yeah, and or Afrikaans. Afrikaans also. Hmm. Excuse me. Afrikaans also. Oh, uh, I don't know. A lot of people speak Afrikaans. It depends on where you go. If you go up into the into the Karoo, yeah, into the deserts. Oh, it's a beautiful. You'll find a lot of Afrikaans, mostly, in fact. Okay, uh, Diane. Now, this is a really, really accurate drawing here. <laughs> you. Hi, Rob. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I, you I said had to... you, you still weren't done with it? What, what, what would you want to do with it? Oh, no. I, well, I still need to. There's a lot of outlining, right? Yeah. There's still a lot of outlining and yeah. and and <clears throat> just just that just all that um, all those all that scroll work on the yeah. wallpaper and and um, the tablecloth. I think it, it needs like some more outlining and things like that. So <laughs> 
And that's about all I can see, really. Um, and and up, you know, the wallpaper up at the top, there's that basket, the blue basket, kind of in the middle of the painting, sort of in the middle. Yeah. I I need to go kind of go over those ink lines that I have in the back and just kind of bring them back out with some blue. Maybe I have to use blue gouache or something, or blue with gouache just to blue bring those white. out. Yeah, I'm sorry, blue is yeah. white. Yeah. Go That's what I would those. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little line work in that. I think you're finished. I mean, this is a really nice copy. Yeah. Oh, thanks. It was okay. it 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 was it was actually nice to be able to work with ink, just just yeah. the ink outline because, you know, we didn't really have to worry about um, why, as you were saying, as with form or trying to get shadows or right. show form shadows, and it's just like everything just went on flat. So that was fun. I, I couldn't get it very even, but it was still fun. It's like a coloring yeah. book almost. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Right? <laughs> and you know, it really, I, I immediately, when I started painting right away, it immediately brought me back to, I'd say the third grade or second grade. <laughs> I, used just, I used to use markers though quite a bit in the, in the coloring books. And kind of reminded me of that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, okay. this was fun. Thank yeah, you. Your beauty, yeah. Thank you. All right, and Helen, there you go. Were you there? Yes. Hi. 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 Um, <clears throat> yeah. Good color. And you, you really got the flatness too. You, you got the uh, the design. You get nice looking color, nice line quality. You know, don't don't worry about like for instance the lady's a little small. It, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you were just trying to make this perfect copy, yeah. But what we're trying to do in here is just try to understand what he's after. What is the artist trying to do? And maybe by copying it, we can incorporate that into our own work in some way. Like, I'll tell you one thing big in watercolor is really big flat areas. That's a, that's a big thing in watercolor because you really want to show off those uh, those wash marks and the strokes and that type of thing. So, like this this cauliflower bloom you got right there, and this too. We're looking for those things. We 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 like those things, and and you can see them in these big flat areas. But when when you know when things get too intricate, it, it's hard to see them and. So our, our watercolor artists will really fight for those big flat areas like this. So that's one thing to get at. And then, you know, we, we do it for the expressive quality, which is, I, I think, numero uno, that's what he was after. Some form of expression. So I, I you know, I might, See this little line quality you got going around here? Mm -hmm. I might try a little bit more of that, you know, that's about it. Oh. I, I think you got it, it's really good in, in um, all the blue things, but anywhere else you might see it, you know, not around everything, but you know, um, maybe her hair or maybe a few more areas, but that's about it. Just just to clear anything up. That, mm -hmm. I mean, really, you're, you're, you're pretty, Pretty, pretty much complete here, I think. Yeah. I just have a lot of white space, you know, also blue between the red background. I have so many white oh, edges, okay. not, not covered seats. That's okay. That, 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 that's sort of a watercolor thing to leave a lot of big white areas like these. It's okay. Yeah, it's just, should I, should I in, put in watercolors, blue? actually, not, not that this is necessarily a watercolor class, but we do end up wor working in watercolor here quite a bit. The, it, it, it's, a, it's an aesthetic of watercolor painting to leave these kind of, these little white marks right here. It is. If you, you know, if you go back and cover them all up, they look kind of patchy and and it, and it can kind of compete with your beautiful marks. And so we, 
And you know, actually the leaving of the white paper is an aesthetic all in its own. So a lot of, a lot of us really actually try to leave the white of the paper. I know it seems kind of backwards, but remember, we're trying to show off the human qualities, not, not cover them up. So, and, and you could see by studying Matisse and a lot of these artists, you could see where it comes from. In, in modern painting, in contemporary painting right now, you know, you can see where it comes from. Here, here he's uh, over 100 years ago doing, trying to escape the dogma of, mm -hmm. of um, traditional academic painting. So, yeah. anyway, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Beautiful work. There's George. <clears throat> there was no way. Drawing, was, George. There was no way I was going to finish this yeah. after the class. So this is what I started to work on when you took the break. So I have color on it now, but. It's this a good looking drawing. I yeah. can relax and have fun with it. Is that just pencil? Yes. Yeah. Uh, number two soft. Is there a number two hard? <laughs> just so um, there is a hard. I know. You mean the eight two H? It's this is a, a three H hard and a two H B soft. This is a two H B soft. Two H B or two B? It says HB2. Wow. And I've never four. heard of an HB2. Yeah, what does all that mean? Well, the H's mean hard and the B means I don't know. <laughs> I thought the B means, means soft. soft. Yeah. So maybe and it's they a, have like H and HB, and there's even an F, which I don't know. Yeah, they're bizarre. Yeah, it must be a combo hard soft. HB, anyway, HB2. Ty Ticonderoga, you know, the typical yellow pencil with the yeah. eraser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Staples. Well, anyway, this is a good, a really good looking uh, drawing. You, you really took your time and, which I think is a great idea. You get some big, nice, flat areas. Yeah. Love it. Saving the red to the end. Oh. Hmm. Ooh. So I'm, I'm well, what about the um, what about some of the uh, line work? Are you going to do that at the end? Yes, I want to do uh, either pen or yeah. I have the indigo. I might use around. I have the light blue now in a lot of the the things with the light blue in it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm try indigo, and then indigo and pen. Okay. Yeah, I'll send it to you after I finish. All right. But thank you. We'll, we'll see you in a Or you can just put it in your background of another class. <laughs> I'll be like, hey, you yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you'll see it then and be yeah. really shocked. Yeah, that would make a great point. That, that, that be the, you, you might not even want to change it after that. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, George. Thank you. You're welcome. And Christine, you're getting there. You're getting there. This is looking good. Yeah. You know, everything's everything's correct. Just, you know. Yeah, I got to put a lot of indigo on the blue vine things and do everything else. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the way you're doing everything is, is just absolutely perfect. Nice looking drawing, too. You guys' this drawings all look better than mine. Hey. I'm not supposed one. to outdo the teacher. I drew one last night and it must have taken me, I don't know, at least an hour and a half. Ah, so you cheated. Cheated. Uh -huh. I can't do it otherwise. I, I'd still be drawing. I actually recommend that. Uh, if anyone sees a, a drawing that you think is going to take a while, you might want to just um, lay it in at least before class. I mean, that, that should help you. And do you mind when we finish it at home if we send it to you? Does that make No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All righty then. Rob? Yeah. Yeah. The, the in the uh, through the window, those uh, trees that he did. Yeah. Um he used oil, but he sort of like stippled it. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. Pretend I, I, I don't know. I'd have to really get it. I was looking at those two. What is he doing up there? <laughs> yeah. Sort of. It's almost like you just a dry brush of blobbing down or Yeah, I don't know. Wow. I bet you David Hockney knows. Yeah. Can you see how David Hockney's just so inspired by Matisse? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Hey, thanks. Thank you. And Maria. Ooh, that yellow around it really pew. <laughs> Except I haven't removed the tape because I still have a lot of work to do. Is it is the uh, is that yellow like a non-stick or a low tag uh, tape? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this okay. was really fun, but I still have ways to go, and I didn't want to mess it up. So. Yeah. You know, I, I recommend because uh, uh, I like the line work you're doing up there in the top right. But I recommend maybe a little thinner brush. Yeah, that's what I I put that I um, I don't have ink and I I uh, the brush is it's just too thick. So I'd like to find an ink pen that I could oh, yeah. uh, do the lines a little bit less messy. Yeah, an ink pen or just to yeah a finer brush too. But I mean that that that'll definitely change your painting and then what else uh, i could see this gray that gray green maybe a little yeah a little bit more um, yellow to that color i think it would be a little bit more saturated okay also we need to put some yellow flowers there yeah those little yellow ones <laughs> yeah and right i think it just needs some line work and it's yeah everything looks really good yeah that's pretty much the only thing i recommend uh so yeah i think that's it just a thank thinner line, a thinner line quality would do it for you thank you very much you're welcome all right thank you and we're moving on to lily all right lily let's see let me clear my all right I mean, right, look Look what the line quality does for it, wow. Now, what, what, what kind of pen are you using around here? This almost looks like you did it digitally, wow. Yeah, I did a, forgot the name of it. It's, um, a it's actually pen? a brush pen. Yeah, and I, yeah. two kinds, one is a thicker version and the other is a thinner version. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd probably go with the thinner version. Most mostly, I can see who's doing it here. And then again, I would go a little bit greener, a little bit more yellow in your green, I, I think. And that could be because you're taking a photo of this in in, uh, in a darker area, and I'm not getting the true color. So, but it looks to me like it might be a little bit more yellow in that green, and then okay, um, the ultramarine blue I would put on straight, straight ultramarine blue on here, and even. On some of these, where you see a little darker blue, deeper, mm -hmm. just just straight ultramarine blue is what I used. I think mm -hmm. it was looking pretty good. So, okay, all right. I think that's about it, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And Helen, work in progress. Yes, work in progress. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Right. So it's, it's coming. Oh, you gave it a little bit of an edge to the table right over here. That's yeah. Cool. All right. Um, it's smudgy. I'm left handed, so my hand smudges across the pencil. I'll erase all You said stuff. you're a teacher. Did you teach math? I, I taught science. Oh, you taught and science? Oh, okay. And I loved it, but I've always loved science and art and music. Are you schizophrenic? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't talked to my other self lately. I know it's big in my family. No, it's not in my family. Um, other things are, but not that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, it looks good to me. I mean, um, I'll look for it in the email. 
All righty, sounds good. Yeah, thanks. Got a good looking, good looking thing there. Just, just, just start off with your big shapes. You know, I mean, I did the red. You don't have to do the red first, but yeah, just treat them as big, flat shapes. Okay. You're fine. Well, okay. Good. Thank you. And if you could do that painting you did last night, you could do this. Mm -hmm. African mass. We're on, we're on a primitive thing lately, aren't we? <laughs> okay. Hey, cool. Now this is uh, this is Lisa. No, this is Helen. Oh, Helen. I'm sorry, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Hi. Yeah, I'm taking my time. That's okay. Yeah. Take your time. Yeah, this is really fun. One of my favorite type of painting. So, thank you. Right. It, 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 it's kind of intricate. I would say it's you know it's it's a lot like um, textiles or you know it. It could get pretty intricate, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like coloring. That's what somebody said, like in third grade or something. You know, I thought, yeah, that's what it feels like. It's really cool. It is. The red doesn't look as red on, I mean, it's mine's a regular, you know, brighter than that. It's not so terracotta looking as it looks on your screen. I know, my, mine, mine is a little bit, uh, A little off. I wish it would have been a little bit more red, red. Yeah, it's funny because mine looks red, red. Yeah, but uh, anyway, yeah. Thanks for this exercise. I really, sure. yeah. I'll send you it when it's done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna get a whole bunch of them when they're done, huh? What's yeah. the point of doing the crit? I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Hey, John. Wow. How, now, how did you get that blue? So. You just painted it all red. Did you go opaque blue? Is that is that gouache? Hey Rob. Hey. Sorry, I missed the question. Is that blue, like blue gouache or something that you went over with? Or? Uh, yeah, that it's all gouache actually. Uh huh. Yeah, maybe gouache would have been the better way to go on this. Yeah, I did, when I looked at all that detail, I was like, man, I don't want to paint around all that stuff. So. Yeah. Just just go thick. Um, I, There's I, still a work work in progress, obviously, but and your color is fantastic. So, thank you. Your color is usually fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, more of this, more of this, <laughs> and of course <laughs> yeah. the outlining. But you know, it all goes without saying. You're doing it. Work in progress. Yeah, absolutely. beautiful. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, can you see how it really relates to the uh, Modigliani from last night? Absolutely, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, both, both. You know, by the way, there's a neo-primitivist uh, movement in the, and then, and then a neo-expressionist movement in the '70s, um, which are highly related to this kind of art. If you're attracted to this kind of art, this goes, you know, to everybody. But if you're attracted to this kind of art, you might want to just look up neo-expressionists. And that, that's a, that's a, a group of, well, it's not a group, it's a movement of painting that was, it's a worldwide movement, painters from all over the world, painted in this neo-expressionist sort of realm. And um, it was kind of neat because, you know, art went really conceptual and really, like, to the found object. And I think in the 70s, you know, in the early, late, late 60s, whatever, people were wondering what to do. And, so you see these artists come along in the 70s and 80s that start really getting back to a lot of uh, very, very kind of primitive, primitive concepts and, and highly inspired by Matisse. So anyway, if you nice. like this, look up the neo-expressionists, everybody. All right, cool. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you. Nice work. There's Teresa. Hi. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> that's lovely. Yeah. What do you think? Any any issues? I don't think you're looking like you're having any problems with this. Uh, the issues is it was not that easy to put outlines with brush. Right. But but, but good practice. <laughs> yeah. All well, that pattern, huh? Mm -hmm. so you're you're you're. You're, um, the way
way you outlined it, everything it looks fantastic. Wow. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Well, he's pretty loose about the way he does it. Mm -hmm. And your red is, you know, I, I think actually, I, I think probably his, I mean, yours looks a little washed out. Yeah. It's just going to happen in watercolor. I, I added too much water. But I think it's, it's, uh, it's possible that the original one is kind of you know, washed out. A, a lot of the, a lot of the ones I, I tried, I was looking at were, were a lot more washed out than the ones I picked. So I'm not mm -hmm. really sure what the actual true color of this thing is. So, mm -hmm. I, I think I think hers compares pretty well to yeah. the 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 second photo that you sent, the one with the woman walking in front of it. Yeah. Because it seems yeah. like the background red, if they're not the same red, the background red is one red and the table red is a little more intense. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay, Teresa, very nice. Thank you. Love it. Nice work. And there's Phoebe. All right, I'm still getting that. And you're using a little gouache in it. That's great. Yeah, I, That's I great. decided to heck with this. <laughs> yeah. Just um, do it like that. I think that's great. I think your technique is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, this is this was hard. Um, brush control and which brush to use and how much water and. Ooh. Yeah. It was. Yeah, the thing is, is that when I when I'm trying to cover. Especially the way you did the table, it looks really good. Um, when I'm trying to cover really well, uh, I know that if I add too much water, it'll flow really nice, but it'll yeah. dry light. Yeah. So it's important to keep enough paint on there. I or just go over it twice. Yeah. <laughs> they go over the, back, the, the wall needs to be gone over. But you know, I, I, the colors don't look right. Yours match. The photos, but, but the I don't know what I it, it looks almost brownish. Oh, I don't think your your red looks brownish. Okay, I uh, I added I did add a little bit of blue to the red because I thought, oh, my cadmium red looked too orangey. Now I think it looks too blue. Anyway, um, yeah. Yeah, I'll try it again. Remember that the cadmium orange, the cadmium red is orange already. So if right. you add blue to it, that will that'll gray it a little bit. Well, it did. <laughs> yeah. But it looks fine to me. I, honestly, I think it looks fine. And I think I spent ten or fifteen minutes on her head. I could not get that right. But I don't think it's you know it's it's not highly drawn. So I wouldn't I wouldn't spend too much worry time. Too much, on it. right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. You, you know, by the way, who, who uh, this artist named Vuillard. Uh-huh. Uh, Vuillard. Vuillard. Uh, uh, did themes like this quite a bit. Very, very similar themes, but, you know, usually more muted colors. Right. And woodcuts didn't, I mean, there was a show at the Norton Simon mm. recently of his woodcuts that are really beautiful. Oh, wow. This is wonderful, Mitsuko. Yeah, Mitsuko, oh. really nice. Oh, I haven't finished it. Uh, and I have to take care of those uh, little white area that I didn't paint. Red. Oh, little niblets. Yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. As, as for yeah. the pattern, I did more than he, he did. <laughs> I put extra patterns on it. <laughs> Patterns and patterns and patterns. Yes. Put the extra flower or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's great. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, looks, looks just about finished to me. I mean, just, just right. Any kind of um, um, little cleanup. I call them pickups. Yeah, pickups. Yeah. Any little pickups that you need to correct. And the, I usually uh, leave it alone for a little while and then come back to it. Okay, yeah. It really helps. 
Right. Okay. Thank you. Does everyone in the class know that Mitsuko and George are in a show at the Creative Arts? Oh, yeah, how about that? In Sierra Madre. You can go see their work in person. I think that's the only the, that's cool. call from this class. Oh, Hector. And, and Hector is also Toby John. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Phoebe. They weren't in, in this class, that's why I didn't mention them. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. To go. It's, it's fun to see, George. Uh -huh. How, what what time do they close? Oh, that's oh, a good question. During, no, what, what time do they close during the day? Today? Yeah. Oh, um, I honestly don't know. Four or five? Four or five. Or four. Four or five. <clears throat> I just wanted because I don't, I don't have a car. My, oh. My wife and my daughter both work and I'm stuck here. I just ride my bike everywhere until I get a car. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Huh. The, the ones that I, I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I have there is all, uh, all I did in your class. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And the Thank one you. that was sold to the, uh, it's, they said it, the chairman of the board of that place is uh, uh, the one on Monday night. Yeah, you know, I like I that. Said, yeah, like a model like, like last night, but uh, yeah. it did, uh, yeah. Which one was that, Mitsuko? Mm -hmm. Which one was that? Was it the lady with the necklace going sideways? Right, right, right. Yeah, I love that the lady one. Going, yeah, yeah. The lady going on sides. Like a modern media has a little bit courage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or in your class, I did. Great. Yeah, I remember that one with the little collage. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't spend much time or uh, painting those, but. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. They're open till 5 p.m. I just checked. Okay, five. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mitsuko. And Suzanne? Lovely. Yeah, that's a really nice one, Suzanne. Nice well, now I'm color. outlined. <laughs> now <Right>. I'm outlined. <laughs> Little outline. So you did some on the chair, just like that. Yeah. A little bit in her hair. Right. What? You got it. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's hard You're for right. me to You're... work. Huh? It's hard for me to work fast. <laughs> on these kind of things yeah you know. yeah i'm not a fast worker so this, this isn't uh, the kind of thing you want to do too fast i mean it's a uh, big flat areas outlining things it's not it's funny you you would be you would think some some of the uh tonal things which look much more difficult are actually easier technically that they go faster when you know what you're doing they uh -huh. go faster and on something like this even if you know what you're doing it's, it's slower yeah so yeah but very fun very yeah. therapeutic this is a nice piece thank you thank you nice work um gail oh that's a winner oh yeah went as fast as i could go yeah and that's that's just fine. It's a little blotchy, but uh, it's not too blotchy. Yeah, I can see a little more green in the in the outside the window, in the grass, maybe in it. Um, yeah, the red. You mean you mean trying to get this perfect red? Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I, that that would never work. I I, you know, I, I wouldn't like it like that anyway. So. Yeah, I, I don't think it really matters. I, I, what I, mostly what I think matters is your your understanding of the flat plane. That's what he's all about. He really gets rid of perspective. I mean, not totally though, because you can see it in the chair and and the table and a few things, and even the windowsill. You can see a little bit in there, but he. 
he definitely reinterprets it. It's not, nothing like it was, you know, b before he comes along. They just decide to throw perspective out. They don't want to be bound by anything, you know? Right. Or, or I think the thing is, is they'll use perspective when they need it. And when they don't, they don't use it. They just don't want to be bound by anything. So, yeah. I would say in your piece, the only thing I could think of is maybe a little more line work around the outsides of things, but that's kind of up to you. I mean, yeah. you know, a couple of, and that's really up to you. Right. It's, working, it's working for me, so. Thanks, work. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Oof. Now you got a really bright, you get the brightest red of the day. Is that is that is that your camera? Or is it really that bright? It's really that bright. It's just cad red. Yeah, cad red can be very. But you got it on there really solid. Are you using a hot press paper or? I'm using multimedia paper. Yeah, it does it does kind of cover a little bit better on there. Yeah. It's three hundred pounds, but. Wow, three hundred pounds. Oof. That's that's basically bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you know, just just a little line work here and there. Yeah, it's there's no gouache and it's all watercolor, and I don't have a pen, so I need one of Henry's pens, I guess. No, you, you could definitely do it with a brush. Okay. Sure. Just you know, just use the very tip of the brush. Should be fine. Or you know, you can do quite a bit with a pen. Just a regular Sharpie or something too. I know that gives you just the one thickness. So if you want a variation to it, then I'd use a brush. But, you know, uh, that, that red is re really great too. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> is it a, a cad red dark or light or you don't know maybe? No, it's just plain cad red. Yeah, cad red, which, which is cad red medium. Yeah, pretty much right out of the tube. I mean, I added a little bit of water so I could move it around, but. Yeah, that looks like cad red to me. Cad red light is oranger. Yeah. And the cad red deep is bluer and darker. Yeah. They add blue to it to get it deeper. So. All right. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay, Gay. Thank you. Nice work. Uh, Henry, Hi, did you do two of them, Henry, or? Uh, I, uh, same, same uh, I just uh, included some margins so you can see the material I used. It was uh, silk. You're working on silk, huh? Yeah, I put, I put the name on and the material on, on top of that piece. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a uh, golden wow. silk, yeah. This looks like a print or something. Yeah. So you painted all the red, and then you went over it with gouache. Yeah, I th I think <laughs> that's the only time wise <laughs> approach yeah. I took. That might have been smarter. Thank you. For me, uh, I uh, because I didn't paint around the, the pattern. I just uh, um, draw them with uh, opaque and dark. Yeah. yeah. Lovely, lovely um, line work. Did did you use that pen to do the line work? Uh, I use the brush, just a regular brush. Just a regular brush, yeah. Some liner brush is very sharp, uh, pointed. I, I like your trees in the background. Those are great. When you went back into. Thank you. you. You got a lot of that texture. It looks almost iridescent. <laughs> it's it is uh, iridescent um, silk, metallic silk. Yes. Oh, if I don't I cover the it, the it, it, it there, shines. Yeah. yeah. It, the surface is shining, but uh, after painting, it's become dull. I, I covered yeah. most of it. I tried to save them, but I, I think I, I didn't save any. Even. Oh, there's some spot on the uh, fruit. I, I forgot. I think uh, you can see the original yellow color on uh -huh. the, on the plate, uh, the fruit uh, right uh, under her head. Yeah, before uh -huh. before her. Yeah, that's the original uh, background color. Oh, oh, you can see on the right margin, that's the same yellow, the golden yellow, yeah. That was, uh -huh. that's, 
iridescent, the the metallic. Uh, oh, so that's the end. Gold, oh, the metallic see. gold silk. Yeah. I can see it kind of coming through your reds a little bit, which yeah, we should, said. exactly. Like, that's what I wish. Yeah, it, it it's not totally blocked. Yeah, it's like toned toned uh, paper. I painted yeah. on silk a little bit, but I had to use resist because the color would spread. Um, so this this silk is a sized. It's sized. It's non-absorbent. Oh, okay. Yeah. We right. only paint on sized silk. Right. Nice. Well, what what are they um, what are they sized silk? Um, you know? Use gelatin and alum. Oh. Well, I'd say this is a beautiful finished piece of work. Yeah, nice. Thank you. I I think it was the windows I painted the 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 white the the lit uh yeah the yeah. Let's try to make a sense of the the sky sky color or something. Right, because the sky would hit that because it's facing up. Yeah. 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 It doesn't work. Okay. It feel like window light. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I try. Thank you for the lesson. I, it's a really um, tight in in time. So I, but I I had fun. Yeah, a lot Good. of fun doing cool. this. Yeah. I I I like the Shinwa theory design. What we call the the Chinese uh, influenced the wallpaper. I think he yeah. he he had. Uh, the, the Shimazuri Jeffrey in his uh, painting studio, in one of the pictures uh, you can see um, right in front of her, uh, his uh, studio. So that's uh, probably, um, and I and as I understand, this uh, uh, table cover is also the uh, same pattern. So it goes on top of the table and then the, the wall, right? It's, so it's a very interesting way to um combine i mean to, to break the different plans or, or yeah a, a space yeah exactly yes yeah. still life landscape and combine yeah they kind of integrate too. all but uh, still separate by the the human and the, the table uh, exactly. perspectively so this is it's really a lot of uh, breakthroughs and uh, uh Two-dimensional design, basically. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Love I mean, it. These yeah. The, these paintings in that show were the big breakthroughs. I mean, think about it. How how earth-shattering that must have been to the art world. Right. Just that those were big no-nos, you know. Yeah. So organic too, unlike the cubist later. Yeah. yeah. These people move. They they move the way we see things. Yeah, I love the logic, uh, the natural law behind it. If you do it arbitrarily, you can do that. But sometimes people don't understand. You know, but this is yeah. so reasonable, so rational, and organic at the same time. I love it. Yeah, Just, uh, definitely. Yeah. And I like like the ambiguity. Like uh, someone interpreted the window as a frame. I thought it was a frame of a painting. Too. You thought so, yeah. Yeah. But, it does look like a frame, you know, frame uh, of painting, yeah. yeah. So it, it, the ambiguity is part of, uh, or illusion is part of the Exactly. Aesthetics. Exactly, yeah. 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 You don't have to. Uh, oh, I, I have a feeling that if he was there and you said, well, is, that, that, is that outside or is it a frame? He'd say, well, what do you think it is? <laughs> <laughs> it could be both. Yeah, it's a frame. Well, that's uh, what it like is. A, yeah, it's a okay. picture outside the window anyway. That's the idea of a frame. Good. All right. Thank you for the. Thank you, Henry. That's it. Bye bye. Yeah. No. Is that it? Did Did I miss somebody? All right. Rob, could you put your picture back up? And oh. And I have a question about something you did. It's there. I did something because yeah. I didn't catch it. Um. You know there are these little little spots of flowers from the vase in the middle of the picture sticking up you know it's, you know what i mean the dots oh uh, you mean the, the little uh flowers yeah how did you do that oh I, mean, I just i just treated them like a mass i i didn't really do the dots but the way henry did it he just sort of uh 
dotted them on there with a little bit. If you put a little white on there, just yeah. paint it red, let it dry, put some white on there, and then glaze over it with the white with the yellow. Okay. That might be the better way to do it. No, that's what I was thinking. Of. It yeah. was possible to do it that way. Okay. The yeah, other one I try with masking fluid, but I I didn't mask it. No, up. I wouldn't only do masking fluid. That's, that's too tedious. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And all right. And, Hold on, I want to take a picture of your... Oh, yeah, sure. Before everybody goes, there's an interesting, on uh, YouTube, an interview with an author who interviewed and wrote a book on Matisse. Oh. And it's, uh, if you look for the interview with Matisse, is the title of it. Okay, interview with Matisse. I'll write that. I got it right here, yeah. And one of the things that they, he commented on, that Matisse worked on balance, shape, and form yeah. through, through color. Right. He's actually achieving a different kind of form with color. I, I do see this. I do see an interview with Matisse right here. So, Could you explain that further? How, how yeah. the color changes the form. You're going to have to have a, um, a model to, or something, but it, um, it doesn't do any good to just tell you. It's flat. Let's see. Hold on a second here. He treats, so let's see. Um, let's go right, I saw it in a painting, a really good example. This is a great example right here. Okay, can you see, before this would have all been shaded and modeled and these would have been all smoothed off, the lights and shadows here on the face. Okay. Actually, both of them are pretty good, but this one on the right is very. You see, how it, it's it's flat in its color, and there's really no highlights on it. So, and it, there's not a lot of reflected light. If he does throw reflected light in the shadow, then he does it in pure orange. You know. Uh huh. Um, it's it's just big flat shapes, and Matisse is the one to really look at to uh you know he doesn't it's weird he's the one that paint the shape and the color and all the abstraction before he ever thinks about of painting the person you know it, it, it's not a um so he sees shapes in the portrayal he's painting right it's not a portrayal it's more of a i'm using you as a model to to show off beautiful shapes and colors, and I want to express it in the way that I want to do it. And um, but anyway, see how flat that painting is. But yeah. if you just put your eyes on it, you can see the lights and shadows. So he's achieving form, but you know this is the kind of color you never would have seen in academic painting. You just don't see this. The uh -huh. Academic painting is much more muted. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hopefully that helps. Definitely. All right. Thank you, everybody. Oh, that was great. I'll see you all next week with another yummy, yummy. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, Thanks Rob. So Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. -bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.